Uh, by now, I hope that you've had opportunity to discuss online with one another the book God is Not and some of the topics there. And I want to um, spend a little time now going over some of the key ideas of the closing chapter by Brent Latham in which he says that God is one holy Catholic and apostolic. Um, these terms you might recognize from the Nicene Creed. Uh, they are the terms that are associated with the doctrine of the church in the Nicene Creed, sometimes called the marks of the church. One, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. Um, and so Latham uses these terms also to um, help us think about how we talk about God and who God is as opposed to who God is not. And so the first thing that he uh, wants to address in this chapter is if many things that we do say about God are not correct, they're not right, they're not faithful to the revelation of God, then how is it that we do speak about God when we speak about God? In other words, if we're so capable of saying things about God that are not true, what are the possibilities of saying anything true about God? And so he, he says, first he wants to emphasize a couple of things about that. One is that we can speak about God because God has already spoken first. Therefore, when we speak about God, we're able to do so and we have the possibility and the capacity uh, to do so with faithfulness because God has already spoken and we speak after God. And so there is, there is something on which we base our sayings and our words about God, and that is what God has already spoken to, to humanity. Um, secondly, he says that when we speak about God, we're not speaking alone, but we're speaking not only after God, but with God recognizing that God is always in communication eternally as Father, Son, and Spirit, that God has, has uh, not only spoken in creation and through the Word and through the Spirit who precedes us in our capacity to speak, but God continues to speak with us and among us through the, the relations of the Trinity, through the Son, and the Spirit. And so um, God speaks, and we also uh, have the possibility of speaking. Um, now, saying that we speak after God and that we speak with God then is the beginning of the conversation. From there, he takes us to uh, an ongoing conversation in the history of the church about just what is the nature of of religious language. Just what is the nature of religious language? And um, he says one possibility, as Thomas Aquinas, the medieval theologian, helped us to understand, one possibility is that the words we say about God are exactly true about God. That is, that if I make a make a claim about God, what those words always mean in human speech, they mean about God. This is to say that our speech and our words about God are univocal. And here's a sign with that word written on it, since you're probably not used to hearing it, and if you read it, you probably read univocal, but we usually pronounce it univocal. 
So to say that we speak exactly the truth about God is to say that our words about God are univocal. Um, the problem with that is that that gives us far uh, too complete a capacity to know God. It assumes that we can encompass God and we can comprehend all of God and therefore we can say what's exactly right. Moreover, it diminishes God to be something that we can name as opposed to having to have God tell us God's name. And therefore, God is just one more thing among all the things that we name and manage and understand. So Thomas Aquinas and Brent Latham now with them tell us that our words can't be univocal in speaking about God. Well, to take an opposite view, some would say, well, you know, if we can't be sure that our words tell us about God, then maybe there's nothing we can say that really lets us know about God. And that, the term for that would be to say that our language about God, our words about God are equivocal. Again, it might look like equivocal, but equivocal is the word here. You might have heard the, and used the word equivocate, although you may not have used the word equivocal. You're using a, a cognate form of the word. To equivocate is to be saying one thing now and another thing later. It's to be saying one thing and doing something else. And so equivocating uh, implies that your words don't really match uh, what you're doing uh, or something else that you say. Um, so equivocal language about God means that we try to say what we can, but we never get it right. Nothing we say really tells us about God. Um, the problem with saying that uh, our language is equivocal is that we end up, as he, if we were to jump over to a later part of the chapter, we end up doing what he says many people do nowadays when they talk about God language. They say, well, since we can't ever get it right, and since all of it is just our attempt to know God, we might as well just choose the things that help us do what we want to do. In other words, we make the naming and speaking about God, the doctrines about God, functional in relation to our agenda. And that's what he calls functionalism as a form of equivocation, a form of equivocal language about God. And so we, since we can't name God, let's, let's figure out the most useful names we could use to try to make the world what we want it to be. So equivocating is uh, not what we want and in light of the fact that God has already spoken and that God does have an ongoing relationship with humanity and is involved in the conversation as we speak about God, we need not become so discouraged to say that our language is equivocal, uh, that while our language may not comprehend and fully understand God, on the other hand, we're not completely uh, lacking in the capacity to speak about God. For that reason, Thomas Aquinas, and here as uh, Latham develops it, says we should, we should use a different way of thinking about our language for God, and that is to think of it as an analogy. 